High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us to a West Indian island in his story called Volcano Roulette. At the turn of the century, the small West Indian island of Mandingo was a meeting place for the many people who roamed the warm waters of the Caribbean in search of business and pleasure. The island was green and lush, crowned by a 2,000 meter volcano called Monte Caballo. The small harbor was crowded by every type of boat, both large and small, and the most popular meeting place was the sometimes rowdy Crown Hotel which was owned by an American called Walt Carter. His rival was a small Frenchman called Charles Mouriac, who was the proprietor of the Hotel Bonaparte. Now, oddly enough, in spite of their business rivalry, Carter and Mouriac visited each other's establishments, occasions which frequently ended in wild bouts of drinking. It was during one of these sessions at the Crown Hotel that they met the English island trader Gordon Blythe, and the huge Russian adventurer, Bruno Kaminsky. And what followed had the most terrifying consequences. Busy place you have here. You bet. Best hotel on the island. Oh, that is not true. The hotel Bonaparte is the best. Huh. Yours is the busiest and is patronized by, um, how should I say, the less elegant clientele. My hotel is clean, quiet, and suited more for a gentleman and gentle lady. <laughs> okay. okay, Charlie. You can have all the credits while I make all the money. <laughs> You hear the tinkling of coins going across the bar counter there? That's money, man. The fat slice of it is called profit. <laughs> hey, why? Never been to Mandingo before. Oh, a couple of years ago. I trade mainly to the West Caribbean between Jamaica and Panama. Uh -huh. And this time you got a cargo for the leeward, huh? Yes, but I'm also expanding by taking on a partner. He's learning the ropes before we buy another trading store. Partner, eh? Anyone I know? Uh, Bruno Kaminsky. Ah, him. Oh, you do know Bruno? Yeah, I know him. Big mouth Russian. Got himself chucked out of the States a couple of years ago. Oh, he was running some illegal immigrants. You ask me, you're taking on a load of trouble. His mouth is no louder than yours, Walt. And he was an innocent party in the case. Was he? Well, if he was so innocent, why'd he get himself deported from the States, huh? Now, come on, you tell me that. <laughs> oh, please, Monsieur Bly, do not listen to the ravings of my friend. <laughs> he is a man of very fixed ideas. Uh, Walt has never met or seen Bruno Kaminsky, but I have. First, he is a gentleman, and second, he is a wealthy man. May we, perhaps you know this already. He financed a ship that was supposed to be bringing a cargo of general goods from Vera Cruz to Galveston. When the United States Coast Guard searched the ship, they found 15 unlisted Mexicans on board. Mexicans who had paid a hundred American dollars each for their passage. It was the ship's captain who was the real culprit by trying to make some money on the side. Garbage. Oh, no, it is true, I tell you. Oh, why should a man like Kaminsky try to fiddle a miserable fifteen hundred dollars, huh? Oh, it does not make sense. Do I sense that I am the subject of this conversation? Oh, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno, how are you? Fine, hmm? fine. Well, it must be more than a year, eh, Charles? Anyhow, don't look so alarmed. I always say that when I join a table. <laughs> Who cares whether you are talking about me or not? Waiter, bring some drinks over here. Buy the bottle, damn it. Uh, this is Monsieur Walt Cutter. He owns the Crown Hotel. Pleased to meet you. You don't look it, Walt. <laughs> but I'm used to that. So... Here you are, sir, drinking with your opposition. Who would have believed that? <laughs> Walt is a very good friend. He is not as bad as he looks. Yeah, I got a feeling I'm being picked on. Yeah, you'll feel happier later when we have finished the bottles the waiter is bringing. 
Here, come on, put them in the middle. Well, have you nothing to say, Gordon? I'll leave you to do all the talking, brother. <laughs> and the drinking, <laughs> yes? Well, uh, Gordon is my new partner. He works hard, knows a lot, and is an honest man. Which is more than I can say about those blasted Costa Ricans that got me barred from the States. I was explaining the story when you joined us. Mm. Gordon knew about it before we made our partnership. It's not my way to hide facts. Bruno is the real prince, you know. Is that not so, mon ami? Uh, my father was until he fell foul of the Tsar and had to flee to Germany. Now he is dead, I hold the title. And all the money we brought out with us. Yeah. Well, if you're so rich, why'd you bother trying to make more? The spirit of adventure and the knowledge that a fortune cannot last forever without good business investments. Say, what? What's that rumbling noise? <laughs> Don't panic. It's only Monte Caballo. Uh, the volcano has a small eruption almost every other day. I see. It has been like that for as long as anybody can remember. It is like a, a safety valve that prevents a major eruption. Did you not see the smoke as you approached the island? Now I think of it, yes. A sort of dark haze. And it says on the Admiralty chart that the volcano is moderately active. Oui, it is a little like Stromboli off the coast of Italy, which erupts at regular intervals. You know, I've always wanted to look inside a volcano. You have, huh? Well, now, is that your spirit of adventure breaking out? Yes. Yes, I would say it is. Garbage. Carter, do you not like me? Have I given you offense? No, not yet, buddy. But I can see it coming. <laughs> Won't stop baiting him. Oh, it is all right, Charles. I can speak for myself. Tell me, Mr. Carter, what is it about me that upsets you? You talk too much. And most of what you say is a load of garbage. That is a direct insult. Come on, Bruno. I can see he doesn't want us in his head. Stay. I have done nothing wrong, but I have been insulted. Oh, calm down, Bruno. I am calm. Coldly and angrily calm. But soon I will erupt like that volcano. Yeah? Well, why don't you beat it off to Charlie's hotel and shoot your loud mouth off there? Carter, you're going too far. Stop baiting him. This is foolish, Welch. What are you trying to do? Put it plain and simple. I don't like the guy. I don't need his custom in my hotel. He's an overblown walrus. No, wait, 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 wait. You have said enough, Carter. I am going to tear the head from your body and kick it all the way down to the harbor. You touch me, loudmouth, and you're a dead man. Now look behind you. You'll see my two bartenders have got you covered with guns. What? This is ridiculous. Now just ease yourself backwards to the door and don't let me see you in here no more. Now beat it. Yeah, and you take your limey pal with you. What? Oh, have you gunned that? Oh, Threat, yeah. I will go with him. You have also seen the last of me, but no, no, Charles, wait. Wait, it is not finished yet. I told you to beat it, Rusky. Let me say this. If you are anything of a man, Carter, you will accept my challenge to a duel. <laughs> Dueling ain't legal. <laughs> so you are a coward, eh? Only cowards make excuses. This island is a French possession, Walt. Dueling in the proper manner is legal. Well? Well, what excuse do you have now? If you don't accept, the whole island will know by tomorrow what a shivering yellow belly you are. What kind of a duel? If you don't give me a public apology, then a fight to the death. The choice of weapons will be yours. I will second you, Walt. Monsieur Blythe will second Bruno, oui? Well, uh, I suppose so. What have you to say, Carter? I demand satisfaction. Oh, come on. This is crazy. Do I really have to go along with this continental stupidity? Yes. Or be forever branded a coward. Well, what is it to be? Pistols or swords? Well, I ain't ever fought with a sword. I can't say I'm so good with a gun either. As you're so close on twice my size, I ain't going to take you on at fisticuffs. Now make up your mind. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll just have to be called a coward. But so what? I'm a hotel proprietor, not a hero. No man of courage or integrity would ever drink here again. You'd be out of business, Carter. He is right, Walt. You must accept his challenge. In spite of what you have said, I am still your friend. And I speak as a friend. Yeah. Wow. If I accept, I'm committing suicide. Uh-uh. Guns and swords are right out. Well, knives, perhaps? I have two excellent stilettos. Family heirlooms. Hey, why don't you try feather duster? Yeah. <laughs> well, Carter, the longer you stand there, the more foolish you look. All right, all right. I'm trying to think. Uh, 
That must indeed be a problem for you. Okay, Rusky. There's more than one way to fight a duel. You said the choice is mine, right? The choice of weapons, yes. And the kind of duel, too. Explain what you have in mind. All right. If you're a good swordsman, a good shot with a pistol, it ain't so brave to take on a guy who ain't either. Now, if we do it my way, it'll be a real test of a man's courage. Get to the point. Okay. You said before that you wanted to see what the crater of a volcano looked like. Now, this is your chance. It's your chance to prove you weren't talking garbage, like I said. So what we do is this. Tomorrow morning, we pack a bag with food and drink and climb up to the crater. What? Yeah. And then there we sit, right on the lip of the crater, until it erupts. And that can be anything up to 48 hours. But let me tell you this. Anybody who's on that lip when she goes off will be fried to a grease spot. So, what you are suggesting is that we both commit suicide, eh? Look, if this is some kind of a mad Yankee joke, I am not a mistake. Okay, hear me out, Rusky. There's maybe about, well, one minute's warning before she blows. That's enough time for a man to scramble down that slope to safety. So I reckon the last man down that slope is the brave one, if he don't get fried first. So... Ain't that a proper test of a man's courage and not just his strength, huh? Oh, it is absurd. You could both get killed. You a coward too, Limey. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, Scott. I think it is an excellent suggestion. We shall do it. Nobody calls me a coward, so I'll do it as well. Oh, you are three madmen. Oh, no. Four. If you don't come with us, I'll call you a coward. Oh, son, dear, I refuse. So... The last man down is the bravest of us all, eh? That's it. And the first to run is a chicken. In spite of his earlier protests, Charles Muriak agreed to go with the others as a point of honor. Early next morning, the four men, each with a haversack on his back, began the long climb up to the crater's smoky rim. The going was difficult, and the sun was low on the western horizon when they clambered over the final beds of hardened lava and volcanic ash. The view of the island was breathtaking, majestic, but the men's eyes were turned the other way, inward to the crater, gazing in fascinated awe. Waves of smoky hot air wafted up at them from what looked like a vast cauldron of slowly cooking porridge. As the light began to fade, parts of this sea of lava glowed redly, throwing up puffs of smoke and flame. When night finally came, the scene became truly terrifying, like a world apart, a gateway into the awful kingdom of hell. <coughs> oh, this smoke and fumes are not good for my chest. Oh, go down. You have come this far. No one can call you a coward now. Yeah, I can. I, I will stay. You and Gordon should both go back down. Carter's quarrel is with me. It is senseless for us all to risk death like this. I'm staying. Besides, you'll need somebody as a witness. Uh, we... That is correct, Monsieur Blight. It is essential to have witnesses. Carter, you have an unfair advantage over us. Yeah? What's that? You said last night that there was usually a minute's warning before the eruption. What is this warning? <coughs> well, the smoke gets thicker. The rumbling changes pitch gets louder. Then the whole volcano begins to shudder like a mild earthquake. And what happens then when it erupts? I don't know. I should tell you. It just erupts, that's all. Come on, there's more to it than that, Carver. Come on, it's only fair to give us the facts. If he's cheating, I'd fling him down into the crater and enjoy watching him fry. Well, Carter? Okay, okay. Don't go get yourselves all churned up. I might as well tell you. You look down the crater there, you'll see it's about 400 yards across. See that? Oh, we... Now, when it erupts, don't all splatter up, just a part of it. You see? If it erupts over on the far side over there, well, I, I reckon you've got a good five minutes to get down the slope to safety. But if it's over on one of the other sides, it's tricky. A minute, maybe less. Oh, uh, we, but 
What about over on this side, huh? <laughs> then we all fry together. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, being a Rusky, you'll know what Russian roulette is. This is called volcano roulette. <laughs> Great, huh? I should have suggested Russian roulette. It would have saved us that long trail up the mountain. So our lives really depend on which side of the crater the eruption occurs. Sure, and how fast you can run. There ain't nothing to stop you going back, though, is there? That's if you don't mind being called yellow. <laughs> Nobody's going back, Carter. So you can get down off your heap and stop crowing. I should throw him into the crater, whatever happens. <coughs> shall, I, shall I put it to a majority vote? No, try nothing like that, Kaminsky. That's murder doing a thing like that. Uh, uh, he is you... only playing with you, Walt. Bruno has a wonderful sense of humor. Oh, sure. He laughed like crazy while I fried. I think you would be too busy screaming to notice. How are you feeling now, Charles? This train is beginning to tell. Uh, we have been up here for eight hours, and dawn is beginning to break. Uh, but what is making you feel so compassionate? Huh? Oh, guilt, I reckon. Guilt? That is a big admission for a man with your character, Well, uh, I'm telling you because you're an old and good friend, and because the limey and the rusky have walked over there to watch the sunrise. What made you do it, Walter? What? Why did you deliberately antagonize Bruno the way you did? Ah, stupidity, I reckon. I heard so much about him, and when I saw him face to face, he... Well, he was just like I imagined. Loud-mouthed, overdose of self-confidence. He got me annoyed. So all I wanted to see was his back end going out of the door. And now? Well, it was a poor first impression, I guess. Now I've had plenty of time to think about it. He don't seem such a bad guy after all. Matter of fact, I... <laughs> I could even get to like him. And you agree that it is total madness for us to be standing up here waiting to be hurled into eternity? Dead right there, Charlie. Well, then the answer is simple. Yeah? I know Bruno very well. All you have to do is to go up to him with a smile on your face and shake hands with him. It will then be over and we can go home. In ten seconds, you could be saving four lives. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you think, Walt? No dice. Oh, but, Walt, you said our stupidity. Sure, I said it. But a man's got to keep a bit of pride or he's just a nothing. Bruno, listen. The noise from the volcano is beginning to change. Yes, I have noticed, but I'm not going to betray the fact to Carter. I wonder what he and Charles are talking about over there. He's got any brains if he tried to talk Carter into offering you an apology. By heaven, I'd be disappointed if he did. Are you seriously enjoying this? I want to see that miserable Yankee run and scream. I think you're both a pair of stubborn and insane idiots. This whole affair from beginning to end is ridiculous. A man must retain his honor and his pride. I thought you English understood such matters. We do, Bruno, we do. But not to the stage of absurdity. Ah, fireworks are beginning. Hey, Carter, come and stand over here with me. I'm on my way, Rusky. This is madness. You see the way the lava is flaming and bubbling? It's likely to explode any second. Uh, We are lucky. It's erupting at the side. Now, according to Carter, we'll have a chance to escape. Yeah, a very small chance. Sir Kribler, the heat is burning my hair. Now, Gordon, Charles, go down to the safety level before it's too late. This is between Carter and myself. He's right. Go while there's a chance. In less than a minute, that crater's going to spew out flame and lava all over the place. Now, go. I can't leave you here, Lars. Go, Blast, you go. Go. Can't you see you're making it harder for us? Blythe and Charles Muriac looked at each other for an instant, then turned away and began to hurry down the steep slope. In seconds, they were lost to the view of the two men who stubbornly stood unprotected at the rim of the raging volcano. Inside the cone, parts were glowing and bubbling, often throwing spurts of red molten lava up as high as the rim. Clouds of choking smoke swirled about in between blasts of searing heat. But still, the American and the Russian stood their ground. 
When you want to quit, just let me know, huh? Why should I give up? I like it here. Didn't I tell you I wanted to see the inside of a volcano? So? You've seen it now. Well, perhaps I'd rather wait than see the Big Bang when it comes. You won't see it, buddy. You'll be part of it. Within the next few seconds, do you think? Yeah, I reckon so. Well, goodbye, sweet world. You treated me well. Well, I've had a few bad patches, but it's been well worth living. <laughs> Determined to stay, aren't you? As long as you are prepared to. I ain't giving you no chance to call me a yellow belly. Why should I after this? You've already proved your courage by standing here so long. So? What's that mean? It means we are quits. Honor is satisfied. You mean we don't have to stand here no more? Correct. We can leave. Okay. You go first. You can go first. It makes no difference. Ha. Huh. All right. We go together, okay? As you wish. But we walk, eh? With dignity. Sure. With dignity. Come on, let's go. The two men had walked no more than 20 meters when it happened. The entire volcano seemed to jerk violently from side to side, whilst from the crater burst a gigantic cloud of rock and molten lava. Although it happened almost every other day, Monte Caballo was a most terrifying monster at such close quarters. Kaminsky and Carter raced down the uneven slope with their rear ends almost on fire. It rained chunks of solid rock, and one of them hit Carter a glancing blow, knocking him down. Seeing his plight, the Russian turned back, scooped him up, and flung him over his shoulder, and then continued the race for their lives. Russian aristocrat reached the place where Blythe and Muriak were taking shelter. He laid Carter out at their feet. Both men looked at him in dismay. Is he dead? Oh, he was hit by a rock, but I think he'll be all right. Ah, so you both come out of it alive. What happened up there? Well, as you can see, we left just in time. What Gordon means is who won. Which of you was the first to leave the rim? Well, uh, shall we say I was? But only by a millimeter. <laughs> Carter, come and join us and tell that waiter to bring over a couple more bottles. He doesn't look so pleased to see us here. I don't think we should have come. Well, it will be all right. After all, Bruno did save his life. And I'll take it back again. If oh, he's coming. He's coming. Please. All right, here's the bottles. Who's paying? You can put it on my account. Uh-uh. You don't have no accounts here. Too many bad debts. Uh, sit down and join us. Well, I will pay. Okay. Wait a moment, if you please. Carter, are you suggesting I don't pay my accounts? Yeah, some folks do, some folks don't. You see, I have been insulted again. Oh, Take it how no. you like, pal. Carter, this time it will be a real duel with civilized weapons. Uh, not again. Please. Oh, they are mad. They are mad. Name the weapons, Carter. Right. Bottles of whiskey. What? And the first man under the table pays, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Carter. Perhaps we can make it a foursome again, eh? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's great idea. Idea. Better than the other one. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.